Okay, so go ahead, G. Uh, go ahead and tell the folks who you are and what you do and what you're all about and give, give us everything about you. My background is as follows. So um, I actually got introduced to IT probably in 1998 or 99 when I was a freshman or sophomore at Tuskegee University. So I took this class, um, just some programming class. I want to say C++ at the time, but I ended up failing the class because I was just all kind of lost to confuse and then I was just kind of focused on some of the honeys that was in the class. So I really wasn't paying attention <laughs> like I should. And, um, Distracted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but overall, you know, I've been in STEM in general since like 98 because I went to college to be an aerospace engineering student where I thought I was going to design, you know, grow up to work for NASA, designing spaceships and rockets and all that stuff. Anyways, fast forward, I uh, went into the military. It was something I always wanted to do. Um, you know, between my first college class taking IT stuff and me going to the military, I didn't do anything with uh, IT. Like I said, I had dropped that class and just totally forgot about IT. But anyways, I go into the military. I wanted to join the I wanted to join the infantry, but my uncle, he was in the army at the time, and he convinced me not to join the infantry and uh, you know pick a MOS that would have you know a, a high employability status after the uh, the military. So. My initial MOS, Military Occupational Specialty, I was called. It was called a thirty-one Papa. I think it's like twenty-five Papa now, but it was a microwave systems operator. And wow. That done, okay. And you know, for those of you who are, who are unfamiliar, it's not the microwave that you warm your food up with. No, uh, no, <laughs> it's to totally different. Yeah, I dealt with uh, basically what they call tropo signals, where we would bounce line of sight signals. We would bounce signals off the atmosphere to establish communications. So I was one of the guys that was responsible for, you know, doing all that stuff, right? Um, after about two years of doing that, I got an opportunity, or well, three years of doing that, I got an opportunity to reclass, to uh, become a 25 Bravo or 74 Bravo back then. That's the computer specialist. And so I ended up reclassing. From there, that's when I actually got my official kickoff into IT it was probably like 2005. And I did the uh, entry-level stuff, the grunt work, I like to say, running around, plugging in network cables, creating user accounts, resetting passwords. I did all that. I was a system administrator at one point in my career. At one point, I used to work for the NSA when I was in the military doing some some secret squirrel stuff over there with their uh, communication systems where I was uh, in charge of, uh, I want to say, a quote unquote data center to a certain extent that was worth a few hundred million dollars. It was like on the opposite side of my office that I was in charge of making sure that all the circuits stayed green and, you know, nothing dropped because where I worked at for the NSA, uh, you know, without going into too, too extreme detail, because I probably, st I probably still can't really talk about it, but yeah, the, uh, the stuff that, that they have, they stuff the, the type of equipment that they have in there is capable of uh, listening in on cell phone calls halfway around the world. And so I was in charge of a lot of that circuitry to make sure that it, you know, all the lights stayed green and none of that stuff went down. And then we dealt with some other stuff. When I was in Afghanistan back in 2010, I was a service desk supervisor where I was a part of a special team in Afghanistan to where we flew around from FOB to FOB, forward operating base is what that stands for. We would have to basically go to these new bases and I was at Cobra. I was oh, at Cobra. Okay. I was based out of FOB uh, Wilson, but they changed. Well, my main base was Kandahar, but the little hub that I was based out of was called FOB Wilson initially. Then they changed it to FOB Passab, but then they sent me up north to, uh, to a FOB TK Terracout. But basically what we would do, we would go to these little bases, these little uh, FOBs or whatever, and basically revamp their telecommunication system. So when we first got to FOB Passab, I was uh, attached to the 101st Airborne, right? You know, they had internet access, they had telecommunications, but it was nowhere near as up to speed. They were still dealing with a bunch of line of sight communications. So we went in there, my team and the civilian contractors that worked for me, it was it was like six military personnel. Then I had like 30 contractors that worked for me, which is funny because even though I was their boss, their salaries were like two or three times more than what I was picking, <laughs> hey, which, you know, it was like, man, you know, whatever. But, you know, so we went in there, we set up, help desk communications with them. And then we also established this thing called a TCF stands for tech control facility. And so for those, you know, for those of you who are, you know, not familiar with this stuff, but a tech control facility 
is basically like it's almost the equivalent of like an ISP, an internet service provider, and in in a way to where you can route all of the communications into this one build, quote unquote, building per se. And then whether it's your your coaxial cables, your your fiber optic cables, or any other type of communication medium will come into this building, you know, through through the actual, you know, through the cables or whatever. And then we will pump the signal up to a satellite dish and blast the signals out to space and, you know, and basically just relay the signals all the way around the world. But our whole mission was to get these guys faster Internet connections, not just so that people can call home and talk to their spouses and their kids, but so that the brass, the colonels and everybody out there could have, you know, faster communication with the guys kicking in the doors, you know, the Rangers and, and any other special forces people that was out there doing what they had to do. So that was like my main job was just running around from fob to fob with my team, setting up all these communications. And so I did that for a year, 2010 to 2011, when I was in Afghanistan. And then I came back and I spent my last, I got out the army in 2015. So I spent my last four years in the military as in what they call an AIT instructor. So that stands for advanced individual training. And so for those of you who are not military, basically AIT is the place that you go to after you do basic training to learn how to do the job that you uh, signed up to do in the military. Yep. And so I was the guy that was responsible for teaching people who want to become computer tech guys how to do their job in the military as a computer tech guy. And so while I was there, I worked there for four years and you know, between myself and obviously all my coworkers, but we, we ended up training like, I don't know, man, hundreds into the thousands of people I mean, that just that was just coming through over the course of four years on how to you know learn basically entry level IT stuff. Everything from A plus certifications, network plus, security plus. We would teach them some uh some basic stuff about Cisco networking, and then we would teach them some other quote unquote secret squirrel stuff that only pertain to military equipment. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I did that for four years. And then I ended up getting medically separated from the military due to uh, past injuries because back in my younger day, I had injured myself jumping out of an airplane in airborne school. <laughs> and so, you know, I still graduated airborne school, but that injury haunted me for most of my career, which um, played a significant factor in, you know, me basically not being able to meet the uh, physical requirements of being in the military. So they ended up medically separating me, which was a blessing because, you know, even though I'm not technically retired, I still get the same benefits as a retiree minus the retired label. Yep. Everything they get, I get. I just, I'm just not officially retired. And so after that, I went back to school. I used my GI bill. To, <clears throat> I used my GI bill to go back to school as a full-time student and went back and got my first master's degree in um, information technology with the emphasis on information assurance. And that's directly related to cybersecurity type of stuff. And then after that, I went back and got my MBA. And this was all paid for through my GI bill, my post 9-11 bill. So they were paying me to go to school. So after that, I was all I was living in Georgia at the time. So after that, I sold my house and moved back down to Florida. And then I started doing some work with this uh this company that dealt with, they dealt with Fortune 500 companies, but my role that I got hired on, I was actually a, an IT researcher. What that meant was we would get all these clients, these big time company clients, and they would give us all of their IT products. And when I say IT products, I'm talking about stuff like, I don't know, you know, ServiceNow or whatever it is that the IT software that you use to maintain your organization so that they can conduct whatever activities that they're conducting that, you know, the stuff that the IT people would use. And I would have to get that information and I would have to do like these deep dive analysis into what can these products do, what they can't do, compare and contrast them up against similar products so that they could take this information, package it up into these nice little packages, give it to the to the CIO, the CFO, you know, everybody that sits at the executive suite so that they can figure out if they want to reinvest or divest from a product or do this, that, and the third. And so I spent mad time learning about so many different areas of IT that were outside of my lane. Cause you know, my main lane in IT is pretty much, you know, the, the networking path. Mm -hmm. you know, so, cause you know, for those of you, when, when people think about IT, you gotta, in, in order for you to kind of like, kind of visualize how many different lanes it is, just think of IT, like the medical field, you know, you got the medical field, you got plastic surgeons, heart surgeons, dentists, pediatrics, you know, basically you got your own little specialties in the medical field, even though you have like a base 
layer of under of education like everybody takes a biology class but then you start specializing it's kind of the same way with it to a certain extent where i do networking type of stuff but you might have some guys who deal with just straight programming some guys who deal with straight cloud stuff which could tie into some other stuff so my background is really networking but so when i was working this one job doing this research it gave me a glimpse into all these like these other areas of it that i didn't really dibble or dabble in to where i had to learn the software that they're using to and i got so good to the point where i knew how to i had a deeper understanding of their software than the people who actually worked at these jobs who were hired to manipulate the software because wow. I had to interpret all this data so that these companies can figure out if they're going to use this money use this software or get rid of it because you know this software can cost lots and lots and lots of money man I'm talking about tens of thousands if not more dollars for a software program to be licensed to a company to do whatever so I did that and then while I was doing that, I also, uh, I also, you know, taught at a, a tech college. <laughs> so wow, um, I would teach entry level IT um, because what it was, I got tired of doing that, and so I was trying to get hired as a college professor. Cause, you know, um, you know, I got, I got two graduate degrees and all that other crap. So I met the requirements, but the only reason I, I didn't, you know, pursue that route is because I think, you know, basically they're trying to heavily encourage me to go back and get the equivalent of a PhD. You know, for those you don't understand, there are various types of P, quote unquote PhDs. You got your PhD, which is like the highest you can get in the academic world. And then you got a, what is called an EDD, an educational doctorate. That's what they were wanting me to get. It's like, a, I, think, I think it's the equivalent of like a specialty type of PhD. It's kind of hard to describe, but, they, but basically they were wanting me to go back to school to try to do that. And I was just like, well, you know, are y'all going to pay for it? Because, because <laughs> you know, you know, I'm a fan of not paying for college. So anyways, that's what, that's what happened. So like I say, out of all the stuff that I've done in IT, you know, the, the thing that I enjoyed the most was actually teaching IT. Like when I, when I became an AIT instructor teaching entry level IT, I remember when I went through AIT to learn how to do my job. And I thought this was the worst thing in the world. You know, but then when I became the actual instructor and I was on what they call the platform, basically I'm the teacher teaching, it was a whole nother thing when I saw like the little lights go off in people's heads when they started understanding the concepts that I was talking about. Because, you know, I would get a bunch of people in who were brand new off the street. They didn't know anything about IT other than how to hit the power button on their computer to go surf the internet. Or I've had people who had some experience, but maybe they only had like limited experience. But then when we get to talking about this stuff, we get to explaining how the internet works or how computers work, how communications work, how basic security concepts work, yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, I see the little the little light bulb go off in people's head. I was like, wow, OK, I can I can really dig in this because the information that I'm putting out here, you know, these people can run with this information a million miles an hour. Like some of these dudes that was in the military with me, they would come in, they would learn the stuff in the AIT land. They would do their two, three, four years in the army, get out and then go out there and get jobs, you know, starting off like fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year working for the mm -hmm. federal government or some of them will go overseas as a contractor like Josh did or keep it techie. You, you guys want to talk about some major cheese. So let me rewind the clock back to, you know, I deployed twice, but my second time I was in Afghanistan. Right. So, you know, we're talking about dudes who are coming out the military after a couple of years, after, you know, getting some basic training in terms of IT to where they can get jobs starting off like, I don't know, like 30 bucks, 40 bucks an hour. I had guys that were working for me in Afghanistan. Some of them never served in the military. Some did only a couple of years. They were making the, the lowest paid dude on my team that was a contractor was making $125,000 in one year with the first hundred like tax free. I had one dude on my team. He was getting paid almost $300,000. He was our information assurance dude. Good Lord. Just one year's worth of work, bro. 300 racks, like the first hundred tax free. And with the option to quit at any time they want, because I couldn't quit. <laughs> they, they would send me back to Kuwait and lock me up on in, in jail on Camp Arif John out there in yeah. Leavenworth. But these guys could quit. And we had dudes that actually did that. They would just quit in the middle of a contract and bounce. But the pay was ridiculous. And so I started making videos on my channel. It's called Tech G, just like my name right here. In the, uh, yeah, I'll in the put thing. your link. I put oh, it. Okay. I put your link in there so anybody, uh, you guys, y'all can click the link and and subscribe to Tech G and keep it techy. Both their links are up top. And so I said, what I was going to do with that channel, I was just going to teach IT for free, entry level stuff, like starting with the bare bones entry level IT cert, which is IT fundamentals. And then I got a class. I, I put that up there. I got A plus, and then I got to start working on network plus and security plus. But basically, I said I was going to put this stuff on YouTube for free.